I wanted to share with you some new things from Ferrozone that are pretty exciting. Uh, Ferrozone is now capable of uh, importing, processing, and registering directly from an SD card. And that's pretty exciting considering that we in the past have had to work directly with Scene first, create project point clouds, and then import into Ferrozone. So hopefully, this will be the future, and we're going to see a lot of steps uh, that uh, will be removed from our process of scanning and getting something uh, such as a diagram or illustration. So I click on uh, Point Cloud. I started a brand new diagram. I click on Point Cloud, and then I go here to Point Cloud Registration. When I click on that, uh, it's going to ask me to uh, answer a few questions, such as, where are my scans? So I'm going to click Browse, and I'm going to go find my scans. Now, I have a three-leg intersection. It's got a couple of three scans in it, and this is an actual copy of the SD card. So we're going to go to Faro SD Cards. And I'm going to find this three-leg intersection color. I'm going to go directly to Scans. And I'll select the first scan, click on the internal FLS file, and click Open. I'll click Browse, and I'll repeat this for the second scan, where I'll double-click on the FLS file. And I'll get the internal FLS file and click Open. And I'll do this once more for the third scan. Now that all three scans are in here, I'm going to click on the options. I'm going to uncheck Edge Artifact. That's a very aggressive filter, and you shouldn't use it for forensics uh, unless you have special circumstances. I am going to click on the dark point filter and the stray point filter. And when I click on those, I'll click the minus on the options to collapse it. I want my registration to be top view and cloud to cloud. It's going to ask me to identify a project. So I'm going to put uh, three leg INT test. And then it's going to ask me to browse for a folder. So I'm going to browse for a folder. And I'm going to go to documents on my computer. And I'm going to go to Fair Zone. I'm going to go to Projects. So we keep everything under Fair Zone Projects so we can find it easy. And I'll create a folder with the same exact name as the project. And when I double click on the folder and click Select Folder, I'm now ready to process and register. Now, processing and registration is not fast, not yet. So be patient when you register. So I'll click yes that I want to uh, continue. And you'll just uh, watch the little status bar at the bottom. Maybe go get you a cup of coffee or uh, go take a walk around your office. The scans have finished processing. And now the registration is building on the screen. You can see it slowly building in the background. And while it builds, we can look around. Now the next choice is to to visually register the scans. That's an optional method of registration. We're not going to use that because of our, our scans all went together properly. So we're going to click on confirm registration and create the point cloud. And this, uh, in other words, this is 
the project point cloud as we would create it in scene. The project point cloud is complete, so I'll click OK and close this window. Scene will now open the project. So as you can see, there's a little bit of cleanup that we need to do. Uh, not a big deal, just a few things that we can clean up with clipping boxes like these cars that drove through the scene during the scan. So we can just click on uh, the clipping box, add clipping box, and I'll just use uh, the road surface to snap to, and then we can raise or lower this clipping box as, as needed. I can then rotate the clipping box using the red circle. I can change the size of the clipping box using these handles on the side. And if you accidentally deselect it like I did, just click back on it. Now, when, once you've got the clipping box adjusted the way you want it, uh, it's going to hide everything inside. We're just going to click on the clipping box manager and uncheck visible. And once I do that, that clipping box is gone. Now you can see I've cut out some of the road. Didn't mean to do that. So I'll need to turn the clipping box back on. So I'll click on visible, close this window, and I will elevate the clipping box. And then I'll take it back down until I start to see that road disappear. Now I'm good to go. So I'll uncheck the visible and I'm right clicking in the middle of the circle. I'm now right clicking on the outside of the circle so I can kind of spin around and look around the scene. And I have some more stuff to clean up over here on the left and this shouldn't take but just a moment. So I'll click on uh, add clipping box again. And once I encompass that, I'll make sure that I'm not cutting off any of the road. And then I'll turn that visibility off as well. So I got that cleaned up pretty quick. And now if I want to, I can add a symbol, such as a vehicle. And I can have the vehicle, it will snap to the road surface. I can have it going in any direction. I like. So I'll zoom out here just a wee bit, bring that vehicle back, and I'll click on Animate, and I'll just have the vehicle do a turn down the street. And I'll change this uh, this guy to, uh, we'll have him going down from 30 down to about 20, and then in the turn itself, um, We'll get this guy down to about 15 miles per hour. And at the end, we'll leave it at 15 miles per hour. And just have him accelerating away. Now, if I right click uh, on a particular segment of an animation, I can change the segment type. For example, I'll just set this to line so it's going straight. And then I will need to make adjustments on the vehicle so that it turns the way it's supposed to. And when I click play, we can see the vehicle reacting. And if I go into uh, the KEP manager, the key event points, I can look at these velocities. So I'm at, uh, started at 30. I'm going to have it slow down to 20, uh, back even down to 13 in the turn. And then oh, we could have him start to accelerate back up to 20 coming out of that turn. Uh, I'm going to turn on the terrain snap. So uh, he snaps to the terrain as he's driving. And once again, I'll, uh, I'll move this out of the way. Click play so we can watch. The vehicle as it turns. Now, I've got a pretty sharp turn on it right here. Uh, that's uh, something that you can adjust. 
by clicking on uh, these little controllers uh, for the curvature. So we can make this a bit more realistic. And we'll make this guy, uh, once again, just a, a line. And we'll kind of see what this looks like. We may have to do a, a bit more adjusting to make it more realistic, but uh, we won't spend a whole lot of time here. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And we can watch this from any angle. 